Well hi everyone and a warm welcome back and to those of you joining me for the first time an especially warm welcome to you. Um, now we've got a number of things we're going to be doing today uh, but before we start on anything I'd just like to say a big thank you to all of you that have subscribed. Uh, we've just hit 1500 subscribers which as I say at every milestone is way beyond what I ever expected. Um, these aren't professional videos, they are purely for the man at home and they're done by the man at home. Um, I have a love of these cars, I've got quite a number of them and I like to restore them and all I'm doing is videoing the restoration process for you to use the same techniques yourself. Um, some of you may have better techniques and there may well be some professional mechanics out there who say I don't know what I'm talking about um, and they're welcome to comment and help out on the channel if they like to. So, uh, of course, the videos cost a lot of money to make. Um, even though they are done at home, um, there is certain costs involved, especially when I go beyond what I need to do in the natural process and start buying in stuff to help with the instruction. So from now on, um, all of my videos are going to remain completely free and advert free, regardless of the video. Uh, I'm no longer going to set up a, a paid channel it's all going to remain free however if you have saved a lot of money from using these videos to carry out a job or you would just like to make a contribution towards the cost of continuing these videos there is a contribution um, set up now available to you and i would very much appreciate anything you would like to help out with the details will be on the screen for you now in today's video we're going to be looking at starting the restoration or replacement of parts on this car um, most of the stripped down videos have already been covered and with winter rolling in I've got to start looking at the process of putting it back together. So over the last week or two I've been spraying up a couple of the body panels, we'll take a closer look at those in a minute. And as a result of those panels being sprayed we can now start putting a couple of the parts back on. So today we're going to be looking at uh, the rear quarter panels, there's three of them, this one this one and this one. Now in a previous video I showed you how to remove this glass without damaging the glass and um, that way we can reuse the glass without the huge expense of re uh, buying a replacement glass. So today we're going to look at how we clean up the glass and reinstall it. Now technically speaking this is a professional job and until a few years ago you didn't stand a chance of being able to do this yourself. But luckily there are now products on the market, professional products that you can buy for home use and it will allow you to refit this glass yourself without any specialist skills. So we'll be looking at that in a minute. Um, now I'm going to break up today's video into a couple of smaller sections. Um, the first section is going to be how to clean and prep the panels ready to go back on. The second section is cleaning and prepping the bodywork that you're going to be fixing the panels to. We'll have a look at the tools involved and then we're going to get on with a job and hopefully have it all back together on this rear quarter completely. So give me a minute, we'll load up the tools to look at next and we'll go from there. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the tools. You're not actually going to need many tools for this job. It's more the chemicals and uh, sealants and stuff that you're going to need. So tool-wise, all you're going to need, regular Phillips screwdriver, um, as long as it fits the screws, any size will do the job. Then you need a quarter inch drive ratchet, ideally with a long body eight millimeter socket piece on the end. You're going to need some sort of scraper tool. Now I bought a set of these dental uh, tools. They've got all sorts of picks and hooks and scrapers and everything in them. So I'm going to be using this. A couple of blades to clean the old muck off the old glass. Depending on whether you've resprayed the panel or you purely took it off to uh, do the glass, you're going to need some double-sided foam sticky uh, tape for re-sticking the rubber trims. In order to fit the glass, you're gonna need some uh, specialist uh, glass um, fitting, what is this called, urethane sealant. Um, this particular make is Dinitrol. I got this, this off eBay. It's enough to do both glass panels and it cost me about 25 pounds 
with all the other related chemicals. I'm not endorsing this, it's the first time I've used it, um, so I can't say how good it is, but I do know the brand is pretty well known. I've watched some other videos online and some other people are recommending other brands that have got a one hour drying time or drive off time. This is a two hour drive off time. So it's not for me to say what's a good product and what's not a good product unless I've personally used it for years. But I believe this is one of the better ones on the market in the UK. So that will come with some gloves if you're buying the kit offline. It'll also come with some primers and cleaners that you're going to need and the equivalent of a brush to put some of them on. Then in addition to that, when we're cleaning up the panels to put them on, you're going to need a bowl of regular soapy water. With that, a sponge, uh, a nail brush or some other nylon brush and I'm going to use a toothbrush as well to get into all the little nooks and crannies. Then to help with cleaning up stuff, because if you've uh, taken off the old plastic trim or rubber trims, you're going to need a method to clean off the old foam backing. So I'm going to use Goof Off, a regular known brand in most countries, but any uh, label remover will do the same job. This is also really good because it softens the rubber as well. It makes it look nice and fresh and new, ready to re-go. Uh, I'm going to be using some isopropanol alcohol. This will also help um, to remove some of the label and trim. Uh, the one thing I would say about this is the urethane for the window must not come into contact with alcohol. So please keep this away from any surface where you're putting the urethane window, fill, uh, window sealant. Um, we're also going to need some degreaser because we can't use alcohol cleaner. Any brand will do as long as it doesn't contain alcohol. And finally, one of my favourites that I've used now for nearly 30 years and I will endorse this is uh, Meguiar's uh, Vinyl and Rubber Cleaner and Conditioner. The, this is the number 40. Now, like all good products, for some reason, manufacturers delete the products every time you find a really good product and then tell us that they've got a new and improved version. Sorry, Meguiar's, I've tried your new and improved version and it doesn't beat this. 30 years I've used this on my car and all of the vinyl and rubber on my car is still fresh as the day I got it. So I'd strongly recommend this. There are still some people around the world that have got this in stock. I would grab it if you can. So that's a look at all the tools and cleaning um, equipment we're going to need for this job, I hope. Um, so now let's look at a quick uh, look at cleaning up. Shall we do the cleaning up first? Yeah, we'll do a bit of cleaning up first. So I'll just cut the video, get the first thing we're going to clean, and we'll start from there. Now the panel I'm going to start with first is this panel here. Now some people refer to this as the sail panel, other people re uh, refer to the other plastic panel as the sail panel. So to save confusion, I'm just going to say this panel. Now this particular one has been resprayed. And I have a really, really strict policy that whenever I'm spraying anything on a car, I will always remove all of the trim rather than mask off. For me personally, there is nothing as grotesque as a car that's been masked up for spraying and left over spray lines all over the place. It means that someone's got to spend hours and hours cleaning all that over spray off when in half the time you could have just removed all the trim in the first place, got a beautiful spray job like they would have done at the factory, and then you put your trim back on. So seeing as this one's resprayed, there's not a lot I have to do to it. Um, the only thing I would say is if you're not respraying the panel, just use your normal uh, bowl of soapy water and a soft sponge and a toothbrush just to clean in all the little cracks and nooks and crannies to make sure there's no grit or anything and that, that it looks nice and fresh. Then if we turn the panel over, there's a couple of things we need to take care of. When we peeled off the old trim, it was stuck on by a double-sided foam adhesive tape. Now that tape sticks really really well and you're going to find that there's some of it still left on the panel itself and some on the plastic trim. So to get that off I'm just using the metal uh, dental tool and all I'm going to do is just scrape it off there till it's nice and clean. And then after that I'll use a degreaser just to remove any remaining residue. So that's all I'm going to do to that. You don't need to uh, watch me filming the whole lot. That would just be a waste of film. So if you just clean that up yourself and then degrease it. 
The plastic trim that I peeled off is much the same. It has a second side of the foam sticky tape on. So again, I'm gonna use the same tool and you'll see you can pretty well scrape most of that off. It's pretty old on here now. If you find it won't scrape off, get your goof off out, soak it in goof off for a couple of minutes and then the rest will scrape off. And then at the top of the panel, you've got a similar thing. Foam, double-sided, just scrape it all off. If need be, a little bit of goof off and then some uh, degreaser. And the same with the foam that was stuck to it. So I've already got a couple that I cleaned earlier ready to go on. I'll just cut the video while I finish cleaning off these bits here and then we'll stick them back on. So I've cleaned and degreased uh, the trim that we're going to be sticking back on. And what we're going to need now is some double-sided foam tape. This is what they use in the factory. It's about half a millimetre thick and it comes in a whole range of widths. For this particular piece, we're going to be using six millimetre wide. So we'll start with a top piece of trim. Turn it over to the side you need to stick. And all you've got to do is run the foam tape along your trim like that. Now when you're sticking it down, don't attempt to pull it at the same time because it'll have a tendency to try to want, and sh want to shrink back. the other side off hopefully <laughs> there we go oh well <laughs> should have put in some glasses for this really here we go, gotcha. And this one goes right at the top here. Along there. Okay, so now we move on to the bottom one. Now this is a very, very small piece. I'm not exactly sure what this is for. But it's there, so we're going to replace it. Let's play a game of getting this off again. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> and now we stick a piece of trim back on. Now this one seems to be shorter than the actual plastic panel, so we'll sort of get it about halfway. Yeah. 
you am reusing my original ones, you will find that many of the ones that you have are starting to crack up now with age. So be prepared to buy replacements um, should yours break up. So then the final thing to do with this panel, we've got our three panel clips to go back on. Now it's worth mentioning that these clips should have a rubber washer in there. And in a lot of cases now, the rubber washer has completely rotten away. And that leaves you with another problem, that water will get behind the rubber washer. Actually, there should be four of these. Um, you can see that one's all crumbling away now. So I've cut some new washers to go on there. I'm going to replace all of them to make sure we don't get any water going behind the panel into the car because that will run straight down to your uh, sills and rot your sills away and also into the trunk of the car and rot the trunk away. So yeah, you can see all of those are crumbling up. It's a really good source of where water gets into your car and does damage to. Every single one of these is all gone brittle. And you don't need to get the rubber washers from Mitsubishi and pay a fortune. You can get these from your normal hardware store. Or you can cut your own from some neoprene rubber. Let me grab one more of those clips. Okay, number four. Cut off that old rubber because if it's not gone yet, it'll be going soon. And what's the point in taking your car apart to restore it and uh, just putting the same old rubbish back on? So there we go. I've cut some little rubber washers myself. I've made them slightly bigger, but not for any particular reason. It was just the whole cutter that I had at the time. I've used and it makes no difference at all. One more. There we go. And then we clip those in. A simple slot in piece. Clip it all the way to the very back. Now beware, as I've said many, many times, these panels now are getting very old. The plastic's getting brittle. So be careful to always support the plastics when you're pushing things in with any force in case you break the clips off. So that's it. So this panel's now ready to go back on, but it's not the first in line. So all I'm gonna do is just put uh, the nuts just on the top there, just so we don't lose them and then I'll get the next panel for preparation. So this is panel number two that we're looking at and this will um, be going on uh, after the glass um, but before the last panel that we just prepared. Now there's not actually that much you can do with these panels other than a quick clean up with some soapy water. You've got some grooves in here so it's a good opportunity with it off to get your toothbrush in there and give them a really good clean up inside there. You will find with a lot of them now, the grey paint has started to fade off. I should have resprayed this when I resprayed the rest of the grey on the car, but I forgot about it. Luckily, I've got some of these panels spare. I just don't have them here today. So at a later time, I'm going to take this one back off and replace it with a better condition one. And then I'll spray this when I get round to spraying some more grey. So just a quick clean up, really. Soapy water. As part of these panels you can see are normally covered by other panels, you don't get to get all of that real dirt and grit out of all those little corners. So this is a golden opportunity to make everything look really good again. Now if you've got the SL model and possibly some other models, I don't know all of them, you'll find that this section here has been lacquered over by the factory and it has a real gloss effect to it rather than the matte effect. 
You must never ever clean your car on a hot day with cold water because you're going to find that gloss peels off. So always be aware of that if you're in a hot climate. I know I destroyed my first set on my car down in Florida. It had been out in 100 degrees all day. Then I took it to the pressure washer, the, the jet wash car cleaning place and uh, found that all the lacquer had come off when I come out. So there's a tip for you. So that's about all we need to do on that one. That's already come up quite a lot better, just a, a bit of a wash down. Got all of that muck out of all those little creases that we couldn't get to while it was on the car. Well, I didn't realise how good that was underneath. Now, 30 years of sun bleaching doesn't do these cars any good, or any car for that matter. If you get to keep your car under cover, it will last a lot longer. And then on the back of here, all we've got to think about is the three nuts and three washers that we're going to be needing. Same as with the last panel, all the rubber's starting to degrade. Uh, that one's actually not too bad. It's the first one that hasn't broken up so far, but I'll put on a new one anyway. This one's the same, it's held its... In oh no, it has come apart. And as you can see, number three is completely disintegrated and rotted away. So we'll put on three nice new ones. And then we don't have to think about that for many years. And I'm just going to put the nuts on there, just so we know where they are. Ready for the job to go on. OK, just give me a second, we'll get panel number three. Time for panel number three, and this is the panel that's going to be the hardest work of the lot. However, it's not too much work for anyone who's got five minutes to spare. Now, by removing this glass the way that I showed in the last video, you're able to reuse it. But the thing with reusing it is you have to do a little bit of extra prep to put it back on. First of all, we're going to start on this side, the outside. This car's had 30 years of neglect. I don't think it's ever been loved. And it's certainly not been cleaned properly in many, many years. We've got all sorts of mould and crud all forming around the rubber seal here. So I'm going to take the time to get right in there with um, a brush and some soapy water and clean all of that out. All of these little things you may want to try and rush through and avoid, but if you do that, you're just going to have more problems sooner and you're not going to have a beautiful pride and joy to look after. A nice nylon brush allows you to scrub the plastic without doing any damage. And you'll see when we're finished what a difference a few little minutes of work can make to this panel. feels nice and smooth now, all the gritty finish has gone, so I'll wipe that off. And already you can see this is looking almost brand new. Just move those out the way. It's hard to believe that was the same panel as five minutes ago. We can dry this properly. I'll 
show you something else. Now what we can do is grab some isopropyl alcohol. Now you'll find that if you use a drop of this on a cloth, it brings this rubber up really nice again. Because this rubber um, well, has a rubbery texture to it when it's new, but goes hard as it gets older, you can re-soften it a little bit with the alcohol. The only thing you have to be careful of is don't get it on the back of the glass because it will react with the uh, bonding solution that we're going to use shortly. see all this muck coming out of the rubber you want all of that out that's 30 years of ground in traffic film pollution in our air Okay, we're nearly there, and then finally, I'm going to grab some Maguire's vinyl and rubber, which is here. And then I'm just going to rub some of that into the rubber to keep it nice and supple and fresh. We'll give the whole thing a final clean once it's all back on the car, but this is just making sure that it's all looking nice before we put it on. And a quick rub down. If you use this on a regular basis, you'll find that each time it will get better and better. So how much different is that? It's starting to look something good again. Now the other side. I can just see that someone's put some film over the glass here for some reason. Just looks like a very light tinting because it's not bubbling or anything I think I'm gonna leave that on what we do have to do instead is remove all of this rubber from around the glass and to do that you can use a commercial scraper or just get yourself a, a regular blade and scrape it off yourself something like this now what I would say is a lot of people get nervous about using blades on this this is a ceramic coating it is unbelievably hard and I've never ever managed to scratch it in any way at all. So you don't need to worry too much when you go cutting this off. Now the easiest way I find is bit by bit. Just go along, get under a bit more and just keep on going until the blade goes all the way under. Do it in sections where it's wide and thick. Once you've got the worst off, then you go at an angle and you'll be able to get the final bits off. You want off as much as you possibly can. Now 
this is a little bit of a slow job. You can see what I'm doing. You can see how to do it. And you can see that it is not doing any damage at all to the ceramic. If I quickly turn this over, you'll see the area I've just been scratching at. And there is not the slightest mark showing through. Oops, sorry, let me dry that off. Nothing at all shows through, so don't worry about this. Get your blade in there and clean off every last little piece. I'll cut the video while I complete this job because it's going to take me about 10 or 15 minutes. There's no point you're watching for 10 or 15 minutes me with a blade. So I'll come back to you once I've got the rest of that rubber off. Now I've spent less than 15 minutes, absolute tops, cleaning off all the old rubber the best I can. So I've got a nice clean finish now ready to start the bonding of the new panel. Before we put that on, we're just going to look at the preparation for this area. As you can see, this rear quarter panel has been resprayed and I'm really, really happy with the finish. I'm really, really particular about spraying. And I'm going to say something now that some of you may be offended about, but please don't be offended. Everyone sprays a car for a different reason. And some people spray it in the way they do for their own particular reason. For me, spraying is about getting the original factory finish or as close to the original factory finish as you can. Now, I've heard some people say that they're using six, coat, uh, six litres of high build primer, six litres of base coat and then six litres of gloss on top of that. For me, that's not going to give you a factory finish because the factory's target is to use the absolute minimum amount of paint in order to get the desired finish. Now, for this car, I would normally spray maybe half a litre of primer, which will only be in the areas where I've accidentally sanded through the original primer. I will use it for if there's any little pinholes or anything that need filling in or any deep scratches or any areas where I've filled because there is a dent in the paintwork. Other than that, primer is not needed because the car is already primered. And remember, the purpose of primer is purely to give the paint a surface to stick to. So when I sand down the car, I sand it back to the original primer and not beyond the primer. That then allows me to put on the base coat, unless I'm using a two-pack paint, which has the base and gloss all mixed together. If you're just using the base coat and gloss separately, uh, sorry, the base coat and gloss, no, lacquer, or clear coat, whatever you call it in your country, um, then all I'm going to use on this car, as far as a base coat goes, is an absolute maximum of two and a half litres because the purpose of the base coat is purely to give it its colour. You do not get depth from base coat, so you can put more and more and more on and it will not give you any better a finish. So all you need to do is put a thin coat of colour on, as long as you can't see the primer through it, that's all you need. And two and a half litres should be enough for this car. And then the final one is the lacquer. Now again, I'm going to use two and a half litres, absolute maximum of three litres of lacquer over the top, or clear coat as some of you call it. But I've put on more than I need for a specific purpose, and that purpose is these cars are 30 years old. If it looks like it's just come out the factory with the original factory finish on, and it's got 100,000 miles on the clock, it looks like it's been resprayed. I don't want it to look like it's been resprayed. I want it to look the age it is, but with a beautiful finish to it. And so I give it just a fraction, the tiniest fraction of additional lacquer. Then I'll get a wet and dry, a super fine wet and dry, rub it over and then polish it to give it a nice silky smooth finish, the depth of original paint, but not looking like it's been resprayed. And then finally, when I respray, you will notice that the interior of the car is a different finish to the exterior. That's because they don't need to put a gloss coat, uh, a lacquer coat on the inside of the car. So all they do is base coat the interior and then gloss the outside or lacquer the outside. And I want to get that same finish. 
there's no need to respray the inside because the inside is fine. It doesn't get exposed to the elements, it doesn't get scratches, it doesn't get polished. So why waste paint and spoil the original finish? So for me, when I mask off, I'll mask all the original factory lines. Now, of course, they don't mask off too much. They have computers and uh, spray guns that will spray the absolute tiniest areas without having overspray. We can't replicate that here. So what I do, I know that inside here is a different finish to here. So I will mask with the tape, creating a lip along there. And then I'll spray from this angle so that the gloss only goes up to the tape and not around the corner. But at the same time, I won't have a mask line because you've got the natural curve of the metalwork. And that way, when I peel this away, I know that it's going to look exactly the same as what it did when it left the factory. With the gloss on the outside and the base coat on the inside and no masking line. The only place I've got a masking line is on the grey and I've followed the original factory masking line. This isn't one that I've decided to use. I used the original masking line and that's what we have here now. So that's my personal technique. I'm not saying you have to use that. Some of you, you won't want to use that. Some of you have decided to spray the interior the same as the outside. Some of you are looking for that super, super deep finish. The other reason I don't go for a super deep finish and for um, uh, lots and lots of paint is because it also changes the perception of the car. Now, the human eye is incredibly accurate at things. For instance, right now I'm looking directly at the lens. If I look to the start button on the top of the phone that's doing the filming, which is only one centimeter away, your eye is able to work out that I'm no longer looking at the lens. And if I look another centimetre higher, you can more than see that I'm no longer looking at the end lens. And it works the same with paint. Any professional sprayer can walk past a car in the street and from five metres away, he can tell you that that car's been resprayed. Not necessarily because of the masking lines, but because a lot of people are spraying new paint on top of old paint. And you'll find that the sharp lines on the corners no longer are sharp lines, they're more of a curve. And the human eye is able to see that curve. I like it so that this car and any car that I spray looks the same as it is when it comes out the factory and no one can tell that it's been sprayed without going to an awful lot of work. Even the thickness of the paint, which can be measured with specialist equipment, I will try my hardest to get as original thickness as I can at the factory. So hopefully that's enough said about paint. I've gone totally off subject. Let's get back to where we should be. So here's where we're gonna be working now. The three panels that we're putting on go into this area. First thing we've gotta do is make sure everything is ready to bond down as it should be. To do that, we're gonna start with some degreaser. There are natural greases and oils in the air all around us and they're gonna stop the adhesion working properly. So we're gonna get a clean rag, some degreaser, and we're just gonna clean the whole area. Just to make sure it's all clean. No grease. Now remember, everything is gonna be on panels here, so if it's not absolutely perfect and mint, condition don't worry about it no one's going to see it it's purely to make sure we get a good job when we're sticking it all down so there we go now when you cut your glass out in some patches you're going to have some nice thick rubber left in other patches you may have caught the metal work slightly along the surface neither of these things matter now window fitting is not my profession, um, I'm not a specialist in it. I would suggest you watch some videos on YouTube from actual professional fitters and take their advice. That's what I did. And the advice I come back with after watching lots of videos to try and judge which one is the best is that the rubber left on this surface should be about one millimeter thick because the adhesion works best with the new urethane sticking to the old urethane.
Now they do accept in the instructions that come with the kit that I bought that there will be places where you've cut into the metal. So start first of all with cutting your rubber back to a thickness of one millimeter left on the bodywork. Next thing you're going to need is the glass paint primer. This one is black. I got it in black because the car's black and most interiors around the windows are black, especially the screen. And we've got to give this a really good shake. I uh, can't remember how many minutes we shake this for. How long? One minute of shaking. So we'll cut the video while I'm shaking this and then we'll come back to it. Now that's uh, more than shaken now and ready for use. Just before we apply it, we've just got to go back to the glass and we've got to apply the glass activator and adhesion promoter first. Now this particular one is quite easy. All you need is a clean cloth. Uh, stick on your, your gloves. And then with our cloth, we're just going to give a good wipe around where the bonding's going to be. Now you only need to do it around the ceramic area. Do not bother doing the rest of the glass. It's completely irrelevant anywhere else. This is going to clean off any last bits of muck and give the new surface somewhere for the glue to stick to. If you're a professional window fitter watching this, I hope I'm doing this correctly and I hope I'm not taking away too much business from you. Now this is going to take a, a minute to dry. So while this is drying, we're going to be able to go back to the bodywork and start applying the uh, primer. So there we go. Let's move back to the black one. And with this particular kit, it comes with a little mop ball. Now when we apply this, you're not to put it onto any of the existing rubber, only to places where you've got bare metal work or anywhere where uh, there is no existing rubber. Now what this is going to do is protect any bare metal against rust. It's a really, really good stuff. You don't need gallons of it. So it's just those little areas where the, the blade is nicked. I do believe this is the same stuff they use at the factory, so hopefully we're going to get the same good results. I'm not on about the brand, I'm on about the type of product. Okay, I think that's covered all the little nicks. Now we go back to the glass, and just before we apply this to the glass, we've just got to give a quick wipe over the area that's all just been prepped. Okay, now it says in the instructions that come with this that you're to try to do it in one uh, even brush, not go back and forth and you do it anywhere where the glue's likely to be. So I'm gonna see if I can get this as close as possible.
you see me going back and forth or forwards in multiple strokes, that's because I'm not exactly sure where the glue line was in this area because I cleaned it off so well. But I'm not going over the same brush marks, I'm just making the area a bit wider to make sure we're covered. There. Okay, now from this point we can now leave it for 10 minutes I believe it is and then we'll come back to the best bit. And now the bit you've all been waiting for. We're now going to fit the glass back onto the car. Now you'll notice the nozzle on these uh, applicators is cut into a V. This will allow us to create like a pyramid of uh, the urethane sealant so when you put the glass onto it, it will spread out and give a good bond all the way around. If you can, you need to try and run the application in one piece, but it's not essential. You just got to remember if you're joining it in any um, areas, not to allow an air pocket to create in the join. So for me, I'm going to start at the top. If I've got this the right way round. Go as close as you can to the original bead, or onto the original bead, I should say. Now it seems that this one tube will do one windshield or two of these little back windows. Now I know in the corner here, Mitsubishi put some extra, so we're going to try and do the same. So I'll probably run that in two separate beads on the corner there in a minute. Okay, and then we'll just try and get some extra in here. And that looks pretty good to me. I don't think I've missed anything. So now we're with the glass. I've found that if you get some uh, cling film, uh, I know in other countries you call it something else, uh, saran wrap, um, maybe recall. If you put some of that over the top and put an elastic band around it, it will keep it fresh for much longer. I actually used this same tube about two weeks ago and with the wrap over the top it kept it soft so it is reusable. So we'll leave that there and now the glass. Now this screw here makes things really handy for lining up. So we're going to get the screw in the hole first. That tells us where our starting point is. And then line up the top here, along the edge. Now the glue will remain fairly soft for a little while. So it gives you a chance to get it all into position. Push it all down, make sure everything feels right along the edges here. All nicely lined up. And then what we can do next is put our screw, our nut rather, on the back of there. And where did I put? Uh -huh. Get our long body socket on there. If you recall, we've got a bolt hole through here somewhere. I can find it right there. Just got to get that on there without dropping the nut. Where are you? Right in that hole there. Okay, 
that's not on there properly. I think this would have been easier if I'd done it from inside. There we go. It's pulled. Oh! <sighs> pulled the glass into position. I'm just going to tighten that down a touch. Everything else looks pretty good. So now we can move on to the next panel. So this is our next panel. Before fitting this, just check you have your three rubber washers in place to stop any water getting in. And it's quite a simple one. Just line up the screw holes. Three of those, get that into position. And first of all, I'm just going to loosely tighten up each nut on the other side to make sure it's all lined up first. That's one. Move that out your way. Here's the second one in there. Two. And I did have a third nut. There we go. Number three is tucked away right up the top here in there. You've just got to be careful not to drop your nuts. There we go. Now it's time to nip them all up. And it is literally just a nip. Do not do them up too tight or else you risk cracking something or splitting your rubber. So just do it so it just locks into place. and three. Easy peasy. Now we're on to our final panel. We have our four screws. Nuts, yes. <laughs> uh, you people at home can probably work out. We don't rehearse this or edit it. You get, get everything raw. Remember your four washers, nice rubber washers to seal it. Again, line everything up. Ah, that's, that's interesting. On the other side, I'm sure there's four of these. And it's got fittings for four, but the bodywork only has for three, so we've got to get that one back out. That's why you had one too many originally. Yeah. One too few, sorry. Like so. Oh, doesn't that look beautiful now? I don't know how many of you have been following this car from the beginning. I actually bought this for spares some years ago. It was in a really, really terrible state and I was literally going to strip it for parts, whatever parts were usable on it. But we had a look underneath and the main body and floor pan was so good, I decided that we're going to restore it instead. 
and I have to say it is turning into a really really pretty car now it's too, same as with the other panels especially if they're plastic never do them up too tight you start off with a, a, just a gentle finger tight just to allow you to manoeuvre the panel into place then you get your wrench and you just nip it up and before I nip it up there's one little screw that needs to go up the top here which I believe is in my pot over there it is so this will help to make sure everything's lined up at the top here again just nip that gently to keep the plastic in place back inside And the one up the top here. And we're done. How good is that looking? Once this thing's been polished, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. I'll replace this one again at a later date. I don't have time now because we're filming. And, uh, well, I do believe that job is done. So thanks for watching. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video and it will save you some money and you'll make use of it in the future um, not a lot else to tell you really don't forget to subscribe um, give us a thumbs up and like you're welcome to comment if you want if you have any video requests or anything you'd like to ask me please go on to my forum I don't tend to use the YouTube channel for answering questions it's purely for comment and uh, I'll see you on the next video thank you